Do you remember this? It was a nice little machine that Microsoft actually released and it has a Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 in it. This was called Volterra, Project Volterra, which I thought was a cool name, but they renamed it to something silly like Windows Dev Kit 2023. And this was supposed to be the machine that developers use to bring up Windows for ARM applications. And what was nice about it is it was pretty reasonably priced at $600 for 32 gig RAM machine with all these ports and these ports. And if you wanna learn more about this thing i've got a bunch of videos on it but today we're doing something fun i want to see how far we've come snapdragon wise from this to now this because here we have the snapdragon x elite the brand new chip from qualcomm we know that this is going to destroy this but we don't know by how much so i'm curious to find out so we're having a little fun today and speaking of windows for arm i'm gonna throw in <laughs> Something I've been using all along, my Windows for ARM machine, uh, virtual machine. Oh, and by the way, some of you have been asking about the Qualcomm version of this that's supposed to have the XLE chip that's coming out anytime now. It's not out yet, so we're waiting for that one. So we're doing this. I've got Windows 11 on all these, except on the Mac, I've got virtual Windows 11. I've done lots of videos on the virtual machine and how I use that because mostly I'm carrying around just one machine and that's a huge benefit. I can do my Mac OS stuff and when I need to do things like uh, .NET Blazor development, I just turn on the virtual machine and do it right there on the same machine. And since the Surface laptop with the XLE chip came out, I've actually been taking this one sometimes when I only want to do .NET stuff. The Surface turned out to be my favorite of the bunch as I did test quite a few of these excellent machines this one stays at home for obvious reasons now you might be wondering why are we comparing all these things because these are all windows for arm systems so if you're developing on windows for arm and windows for arm has certain benefits like energy efficiency okay that's the biggest benefit we've seen so far but what about performance let's take a look at um, a python test i'm going to kick things off with the mandelbrot python test now this is python for arm running natively on windows typically i would do python inside wsl but as you may or may not know WSL2 does not work on virtual machines yet, but that may be coming soon. Stay tuned. So we're running native Python, which is a good comparison across all three of these. All right, I'm set up with the test for all three of these. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to just read the time because I don't have the Schwarzenegger 2.0 with me. This particular algorithm is the Mandelbrot algorithm, and it uses up all the available CPU cores. It's a very CPU intensive process. Now the Surface has 12 CPU cores available, so that means it'll have an advantage by default over these other machines. The Volterra machine only has eight cores, and four of those are high performance, four of those are efficiency. And the virtual machine, that has as many cores as I want, because I can just assign it cores. So the virtual machine currently has only four cores total, because that's that's how I set it up in parallels. So if we take a look at the virtual cores here, there's four of them. While the logical processors here, there's 12 of them on the surface because the X-Elite has 12 performance cores and our Volterra machine has eight. So how do they do? Well, because this is a multi-core test, the surface should have won this, right? It has more cores than the other ones. It should have really knocked it out of the park. Well, it didn't. So the Volterra box got 89.2 seconds. The virtual machine with only four cores got 89.7 seconds. What if we add more cores over there? We'll see. And then unfortunately the surface got 101 seconds slower than the other two. I shut down the virtual machine and I'm going to set this to, oh, let's do, <laughs> oh, let's do eight. And let's start it back up. I wonder if this is going to make a difference. Oh no, windows. Be right back restarted and uh, it's pretty cool how I can just virtually change the number of processors now we've got eight here on the virtual machine let's try this one more time and since I'm doing this one I might as well do the other two and we'll give the surface another chance we'll see what happens here oh my god what is this okay well the surface got about the same just a second slower 102 and the Volterra box got two seconds slower 91 very consistent but those cores really helped out the virtual machine we're at 46 seconds now and now you know why i like to take my virtual machine with me because yes it sounds like virtual who wants virtual when you can have native or real however you want to call it but this is a very different class machine here the host is a macbook pro right with the m2 max that's my daily driver that's what i've been using for the last over a year i made a video about my review after long-term use i'll link to it down below if you want to watch that but yeah the individual cores on that thing are fast however it also depends 
what kind of workflow you're running. In this example with Python, it does very well. What about other workflows? Well, I also use it for Visual Studio. So let's check that out. I'm gonna just start Visual Studio at the same time and see how long it takes to start. Since I don't have three fingers and Schwarzenegger 2.0 is on vacation, we're gonna have to do this one at a time and then I'll get the times for you. All right, let's start with these two. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> Visual Studio is highly optimized for ARM now and it works really well on Windows for ARM. Now, these are all Windows for ARM, of course, but you can see that on the surface, it opened up much faster. Let's do a Volterra versus Surface now. Wow, huge difference, huge difference there. But yeah, opening a program is one thing. How often are you gonna do that, right? Let's uh, create a new project. Oh, that one's taking a while. Okay, so not much of a difference between these, even though the surface was much faster, but this one, the Volterra box, much slower. Give it a break. It's got a mobile chip in there. Blazor, Blazor web app. We're gonna be doing Blazor web app for all these. And let's do next, 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 next. Now, when I click create, that's when we're gonna start counting the clock. All right, boom. Oh, this one's done. This one's creating the project much slower, considerably slower. Wow, but that surface was super snappy. All right, what about Volterra? Create. Okay. Okay. Not bad. But, you know, clearly we have a winner here and that's the surface. Now we're gonna start up the project. Let's go between the virtual and surface first and then we'll add that one and the time for that as well. Boom. Okay, and the app is running on the surface. What's going on over here? Still building. Wow, that's a big difference. Okay, it finally finished. That is a big difference. Now let's try Volterra. One, two, three, go. Building. It decided to start somewhere in the corner where I couldn't see it. I wanna do one more start of the app that's already built, but this time it's gonna be between the surface and the Volterra to see how much we've grown. And one, two, three, go. Okay, very close, very close. So the surface is still a little bit faster, but still pretty close. Let's do the virtual machine again. Wow, the surface just keeps getting faster at this, but the virtual machine, I have to wait. Now you see why I carry this one around sometimes nowadays for doing .NET development. Before we continue, I just gotta pay the bills real quick. Hang on tight. This may look like your regular spreadsheet, but have you ever seen your spreadsheet execute Python scripts, visualize SQL data, or integrate JavaScript seamlessly? Well, that's what Quadratic does. It's an infinite spreadsheet that'll make developers feel right at home. You can drag and drop a CSV file and instantly transform it, either using formulas like you're used to or code. You can even import Python and JavaScript libraries that you love. And as a multiplayer platform, Quadratic enables teams to share, analyze, and update data in real time across the globe. I've started using it recently and Quadratic leaves other spreadsheets in the dust. It not only offers an expansive canvas, but also enhances it with AI-driven tools for smarter, faster analysis right inside the interface. So if you're ready to elevate your data experience, the spreadsheet of the future is already here right now and you can use it for free. Just click on the first link in the description below. Now we talked about multi-core, what about single core? We pretty much can guess that the M2 Max is gonna have the fastest single core score, but by how much? So we're gonna do a browser test because that's gonna give us an idea of how single core is going to operate and how your web apps are gonna work for you as you're developing and for your customers. And I'm using Speedometer 3.0 this time, not to be confused with some older tests you might've seen, which use Speedometer 2. So let's go. And what this is, is a bunch of to-do applications implemented in different JavaScript frameworks. It adds items, deletes items, adds thousands of items, deletes thousands of items, and so on. All right, here we go. Wow. On the virtual machine, not too bad, but not amazing. 20.6. This is actually less than I expected, but that's why these are fun. I'm doing this in real time, and you get to see my disappointment on my face sometimes. I'm okay with this, actually. <laughs> I'll be fine. Um, 26.2 on the Surface 7, a respectable score. We do get into the 30s on the M3 chips. So this is quite a bit less. And on the fastest X Elite, I believe I got up to 29. That's the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. And finally on the Volterra box, 
This one is very underpowered. We got 14.1 here. This was all on Edge, not on Chrome. So I can't possibly test all the different software that's out there that software developers use. But for those cases that you did see here, there you go. There's some ideas for you of how your stuff is gonna run. And unfortunately, to make things a little bit more confusing, I apologize for that. We got completely different results for Python and for .NET and for web. So choose your workflows carefully, but I'm sure your workflows have already chosen you. So choose your laptops and your machines carefully. Now, what's really nice about the new X Elite machines is their efficiency, their battery life. So I made a comparison of a lot of the new machines. You can watch that video right over here. Thanks a lot and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more tests coming up. And if you did like this video, I'd appreciate a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.